Hello everyone and welcome, my name is Andrew Can. together we can game. In the last episode we learned a little bit about the tutorial, started a mission, and in this episode we're going to continue this mission. We're going to learn a little bit more about the mechanics of Assassin's Creed, learn about free running, and all in all learn a bit more about the game development. Originally Assassin's Creed 1 was going to be a Prince of Persia game. After Prince of Persia Sands of Time in 03, Ubisoft decided that they wanted to create another game, Prince of Persia the Assassin. About an assassin protecting people, eventually what Assassin's Creed ended up being. Now, it is in one of the original interviews with IGN, the game producer stated that they had to basically climb, free run, and do everything you can do in Assassin's Creed, but they ended up changing it to Assassin's Creed because they believed that it was too dark to be a Prince of Persia title. A little bit of information there. So we're gonna get up here, gonna get to the opening here where we will see the city of Masayoff. Skipping part Masayoff. Of memory to a more recent one. Thank you, Debbie. If I pronounce the names wrong, I apologize in advance. I believe it's Masayoff. Masayoff. They'll pronounce it in game, so we won't have to worry. Altair, you've returned. We have Raouf. an assassin. It is good to see you unharmed. I trust your mission was a success. Is the master in his tower? Yes, yes. Uh, buried in his books, as always. No doubt he expects you. All right. My thanks, brother. And we're going to continue. Peace, Altair. As On with you, you as well. Now, as you can see, it's very important that uh, the assassins are very kind to themselves. You can see guards, you see the common folk. We are currently yellow, meaning they're alerted, but we're not being too much of an issue. If we free run, that'll change, but we're just going to run off the map, up the map, up the mountain. And this will give us a chance to look at the GPS. You can see in the bottom right corner of the screen, we have a map which will show us how to get around, where we need to go. It's not that good because, like most GPSs, it does not account for vertical difference and such. But we know where to go. We're on a huge mountain, and the only place to go is up. So I'm going to do a little bit of free running, going to make our way to Masayoff. Going to meet the head, going to push people out of the way. Do not want to draw attention to ourselves. A good assassin will not. And we can see some other assassins waiting for us at the bottom. Let's see what's up. Really get the scale Masayoff as well. So let's walk up and see what these fellow assassins want. He's not wanting anything from us, so let us what continue. Would cause him to run like that? As you noted, he said what would cause him to run like that because, like I said, we're using high profile things, so it's a little weird why he would be running if there's no issue. He That's one thing like I like. Chased by someone. That is another thing. The people will get annoying after a while, so that's another reason I'm going to want to lay a little ah, low. He returns at last. Abbas. Where are the others? Did you ride ahead hoping to be the first one back? I know you are loath to share the glory. Silence is just another form of ascent. Have you nothing better to do? I bring word from the master. He waits for you in the library. Best hurry. No doubt you're eager to put your tongue to his boot. Another word and I'll put my blade to your throat. There'll be plenty of time for that later, brother. Now, because we're in the Brotherhood, that's why it keeps referring to Altair as a brother. This also gives me a chance to explain a little bit more about the time period we're in. We are in a 12th century assassin, a Levitine assassin named Altair, as I've mentioned in the last episode, during the Third Crusade. We're going through his life by the Animus, by Desmond Mile, and the overall goal is pretty much to find the Peace of Eden, which is what we saw locked in the first episode, but we will learn more and more as we continue. As you can hear, Altair is very well respected. That guard just said it is an honor. He's very high ranked currently. Since we're in here, it's going to be alright to run ahead. You can see the golden sword on Altair's side. So, let's meet our master. Altair. Master. Come forward. Tell me of your mission. 
I trust you have recovered the Templar's treasure. There was some trouble, Master. Robert de Sable was not alone. When does our work ever go as expected? It's our ability to adapt that makes us who we are. This time it was not enough. What do you mean? I have failed you. The treasure? Lost to us. And Robert? Escaped. I send you, my best man, to complete a mission more important than any that has come before. And you return to me with nothing but apologies and excuses. I did. Do not speak! Not another word! This is not what I expected. We'll need to mount another force. I swear to you I'll find him. I'll go in. No! You'll do nothing. You've done enough. Where are Malik and Kadar? Dead. No! Not dead. Malik? I still live at least. And your brother? Gone. Because of you! Robert threw me from the room. There was no way back. Nothing I could do. Because you would not heed my warning! All of this could have been avoided! And my brother... My brother would still be alive! Your arrogance nearly cost us victory today. Nearly? I've watched your favorite fail to find. Here. Take it. Though it seems I've returned with more than just their treasure. Master, we are under attack. Robert de Sable lays siege to Masiaf's village. So he seeks a battle. Very well. I'll not deny him. Go. Inform the others. The fortress must be prepared. As for you, Altair, our discussion will have to wait. You must make for the village. Destroy these invaders. Drive them from our home. It will be done. Fast forward in memory to a more recent one. Thank you, Debbie. And as we saw by there, Altair is in a lot of trouble. You do not cross the creed without proper punishment. You can see here an assassin tending to his fellow brother, the people freaking out. We are in high alert, red status. Altair, it's good you've come. We need your help. What's happened? Templars. The they Templar the Knights. Village. Most of our people were able to get away. Most. But not all. What do you need me to do? Distract the Templars. Keep them occupied while I rescue those still trapped inside. As you wish. And we shall continue. Sorry to hit the fellow assassin. We really need to be careful. An elderly woman there. It's going to teach us a little bit about the weapons. If we go up, we get the hidden blade, we get the fist, the throwing knives, and the sword. Got a good bit of information there. Gonna wait for it to uh, let us continue. More injured assassins. This gives me a little bit of time to explain the feud between the Templar Knights and Assassin. This is a very old conflict that is very well known. It's going to teach us how to fight, and the best way to do that is by locking on and countering. In the first game, the combat is not that great, but the game, don't let that stop the game for you. It is an excellent game. You're going to want to lock on all the time. And if you're not locking on, you're going to want to dodge to the best of your ability. There are also ways to charge attacks. But my most tactic I will be using is deflecting to have cat-like reflexes of the assassin. You can also go for a free kind of style, but as you can see there, if you go free, you may accidentally hit a civilian. But the best way I'm finding right now is to counter. You can see this one's a little bit afraid, and when they're afraid, they're gonna not be so has Basically, they're not going to try to attack you because they're too, well, afraid. We're going to want to protect our brother, which I failed to do, so he's going to have to die. And I just love the cinematic effect of the kills. You get to see a lot of blood. Playing this on the PC version, so you get higher detail. The reason I play on the PC over my console, I do have this for console as well, is just the detail you get. You just can't beat it. The PC version came out April 2008, about a good year after it came out. I don't know why they didn't add subtitles. That was a very high complaint in the first game for the Xbox 360 and PS3. In fact, it got a huge outcry by the deaf community because of it. 
mostly because they can't tell what's going on, and without it, there's nothing. Now, he's killed a civilian in this Templar Knight, so he must die. As you can see, it's reinitializing. Basically, when you enter combat in the first game, you will see it kind of like glitch. The glitch animation happens here as well. So, we can hear... We can hear Altair telling uh, the brothers brothers and sisters, but I believe in the first game there's only brothers, to head back to the, basically to al Walim and the rest of the fortress in Maseaf. So we are going to climb up here, follow the GPS. Actually, never mind. Where are we going? Up there. Going to listen to our fellow brother. Just do as I do. It should become clear soon enough. Alright. And we are no longer in the red, we are in the yellow, so we're just going to free run. And I find it funny how the assassins find it weird that Altair is running. Excuse me on that. If you go over here, you can get a get an error. You, this is the first instance of the walls of the Animus. But it, it is cool to see your fellow assassins just kind of standing, watching in awe. So we're going to come up here, run through here. Someone tell me why he's doing that. And of course, the comments will be why is he Stand doing this? Stand on that platform, Atair. Ancestors' memory sync. That is what they were explaining with Desmond. That's how this all ties in together. Remember, this is all in the anime. Heretic! Return what you have stolen from me. You've no claim to it, Robert. Take yourself from here before I'm forced to thin your ranks further. You play a dangerous game. I assure you. This is no game. So be it! Bring forth the hostage! Your village lays in ruins, and your stores are hardly endless! How long before your fortress crumbles from within? How disciplined will your men remain when the wells run dry and their food is gone? My men do not fear death, Robert. They welcome it, and the rewards it brings. Good! Then they shall have it all around! Follow me, and do so without hesitation. Show this fool knight what it is to have no fear! Go to God! And the first instant of the leap of faith. I are... Oh, my leg! Ah! Oh my leg! Quiet! As we see over here, this assassin did not have proper form. The leap of faith is actually very unlikely to be succeeded, as you could probably tell, but there is a good bit of science behind the leap of faith. The assassins are doing everything right in what they are doing. So basically, he's saying to follow these ropes to basically scale this mountain and you'll see what the assassins have in store. The best way to assassinate someone is obviously by plain sight. What the mm. Templar Knights do not know is coming will in fact hurt them. Okay, I don't wish to scale that. Alright, let us be careful. No it's said to walk in low profile, but I like to play a little bit more. A little bit more not, I guess, cautious. A little bit more adventurous as opposed to cautious. So let us climb up here. Continue our way to have a little surprise in store. Going to be f basically parkouring or free running as the game calls it. Okay. Alright. Some of these uh, are a little bit difficult to execute, so if I by a kind of few, it's because I'm trying not to fall and die. Death is not a fun thing in any video game, but with that we made it up all the way. We see, we've drawn our sword, we have a nice little surprise. The Templar Knights just wiped out by the logs, and Debbie will fast forward us. well to drive Robert from here. His force is broken. It shall be a long while before he troubles us again. Tell me, do you know why it is you are successful? 
You listened. Were it that you'd listened in Solomon's temple, Altair, all of this would have been avoided. I did as I was asked. No, you did as you pleased. Malik has told me of the arrogance you displayed, your disregard for our ways. What are you doing? There are rules. We are nothing if we do not abide by the Assassin's Creed. Three simple tenets, which you seem to forget. I will remind you. First and foremost, stay your blade. From the flesh of an innocent, I know. And stay your tongue, unless I give you leave to use it. If you are so familiar with this tenant, then why did you kill the old man inside the temple? He was innocent. He did not need to die. Your insolence knows no bounds. Make humble your heart, child, or I swear I'll tear it from you with my own hands. The second tenet is that which gives us strength. Hide in plain sight. Let the people mask you such that you become one with the crowd. Do you remember? Because as I hear it, you chose to expose yourself, drawing attention before you'd struck. The third and final tenet, the worst of all your betrayals. Never compromise the Brotherhood. Its meaning should be obvious. Your actions must never bring harm upon us, direct or indirect. Yet your selfish act beneath Jerusalem placed us all in danger. Worse still, you brought the enemy to our home. Every man we've lost today was lost because of you. I am sorry. Truly I am. But I cannot abide a traitor. I am not a traitor. Your actions indicate otherwise. And so you leave me no choice. Peace be upon you, Altair. <coughs> Harsh stuff for Altair. High price of pay for disobeying the creed. He's experiencing a far better adoption rate than the other subjects. I'm still pulling him out. He's been in there way too long. No, not yet. We're still so far from where we need to be. We shouldn't risk it. What's another hour or two? Why don't we discuss this in the conference room? Give Desmond a minute to stretch his legs. I, I really don't see the need. Warren, please. Fine. And Desmond is up and about. Switching between the Animus, at, switching between Altair and Desmond is a very common theme in Assassin's Creed, so get used to seeing this. We're gonna see Warren and Lucy have a conversation in there, but we're gonna walk around a bit as Desmond. Desmond controls differently than uh, Altair, obviously. He's not an assassin. Well, he is, but not really. He was kinda. Man, I can't even not. change my clothes. Uh, it's interesting to note, Desmond Miles is voiced by Nolan North. Nolan North does a lot of voice acting work, and he's just an overall badass. But we're going to listen to Vidic and Lucy, so I will be quiet. I'm appreciate your questioning my authority in front of the prisoner. There's a word for that. I believe it's called insubordination. And I don't appreciate you trying to kill him. There's a word for that, too. I believe it's called stupid. Lucy, this isn't my decision. I don't set the deadlines, but I'm smart enough not to challenge them. Do you want to wind up like Layla? I know the accident has everyone on edge. Which is why there's no time to coddle him. If you push him too hard, he'll shut down, and then we'll have nothing. We have nothing now. But we will. You just need to have a little faith. Fine. But I want you thinking of ways to improve his staying power. We can't afford to stop every time the man breaks a sweat. It's bad enough we have to trace through all of these useless memories. I'll do what I can. And we're done listening to that. And with that, we will end this episode here. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked this episode, please leave a like and or a comment to let me know what you thought about it. Answer me this question, what do you think of Altair as an assassin? And thank you all so much for watching. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. More importantly, I hope you have a great time. Great day. Till next time.